My name is Master Chief Petty Officer Jason Olson. I'm the officer in charge of the Coast Guard Cutter Scioto. We're home ported in Keokuk, Iowa, and it's named after a river, which is actually in Ohio. That's the neat thing about all the river tenders. They're named after rivers throughout the United States. It is a 65 foot tender with a 99 foot barge connected to it. When planning for an underway mission, it is important to check the status of all their equipment to make sure it is operational functionally. We also review paper and electronic charts of the area that we will be working, as well as checking out the weather forecast and the river levels forecast. The procedures for loading the buoy deck with all of our Aton gear that we will need for a trip is first we'll discuss a plan of what gear we will put on board. How many sinkers, buoys, chain, wire rope, then we'll also conduct a pre-brief to do our general assessment of risk. We will also check our equipment out. The forklift and crane is our primary equipment that we use to onload. And we will make sure that we do not overload the barge deck because the critical draft reading is very important not to go too heavy. The equipment that watchstanders use while on duty is they check um, whatever equipment is operating. Usually in port, it's just the electrical shore tie that's coming from the shore side. We're not running generators or anything. So they're doing rounds periodically to make sure there's no fire flooding on board and to make sure that uh, all the lights and the refrigerators and freezers for our food is operational. While we're on the bridge during buoy operations, there's a lot going on the bridge. As the ship driver, we're keeping an eye on the electronic chart where the buoys sh should be. We're looking at our depth sounder, which is our primary piece of equipment because we need to mark the buoy in the appropriate depth of water. We're looking at radar. We're also looking out the windows for traffic. And we are also looking down at the buoy deck to watch the buoy evolution. Even though we have the buoy deck supervisor who has the overall safety down there, it's important from the bridge to have our head on a swivel and look at all these things at once. Buoy evolutions from the deck is they waiting for commands from the bridge to what type of buoy we're going to be working, which is either a fourth class, which is the bigger buoys, or the sixth class, which is the smaller buoys. And that will determine if we're going to be using chain or wire rope. And we'll also, they'll be waiting to be told if we're going to be dragging a buoy where we hook it up with a chain to reposition it to the appropriate position it's supposed to be, or if we're going to relieve or swap a buoy. So if a buoy is riding low or if it's pretty damaged, we will come up. They can either, either hook it up with a boat hook or we use a lasso, which is a wire rope, to throw around it and we pull the buoy up on deck, put it in the Pelican, which is a chain stopper to securely hold the chain, and then we'll swap the buoy out, and then the crew will swap the buoy, uh, push the buoy back in the water. Now, if the buoy is missing, we will let them know the buoy deck to stand by whatever buoy it is, and they will uh, get a buoy chain up and hook to the sinker, and on our command from the bridge, they will release the sinker and buoy into the appropriate spot. When we brush and aid, that is when the growth or vegetation is surrounding the shore aid and it's interfering with its characteristics. So if, they cannot, if we cannot see the shore aid appropriately from the river, we will push in with the barge, send some people over there with chainsaws, brush cutters, weed whackers, and trim all the brush around the aid. This is a very extensive can be an extensive job because there are snakes, poison ivy, poison oak, so it can be uh, a little dangerous for the crew. Um, from the bridge, when we're getting ready to uh, brush and aid, we will push in. Uh, we are watching the depth to make sure we don't go too shallow. We will position the cutter at a right spot so the crew does not have to go very far with the equipment. And as they are brushing, we are watching them to make sure they're not getting too close to each other. Uh, basically a second set of eyes for safety. Prior to uh, getting ready to brush an aid, the personnel on deck are getting a few people dressed out in the proper personal protective equipment, which for that would be 
helmet, safety visor, safety glasses, hearing protection, chaps to protect the legs and the waist. And then having going over the plan of who is going to be working where and what equipment they're going to be using. We'll also have a few people standing by on the deck. So if we need to swap people out or swap equipment out because the equipment does take a beating, we will also keep an eye on them because during the summer months it can be really hot. So we got to make sure the crew is staying hydrated. When we're recovering or launching a small boat, the main challenge is just making sure we're going at good speed and that the river conditions aren't too rough. Granted, it is the river. Uh, sometimes it can be a little choppy out there. You can't uh, put your, let your guard down just because it's in the river. You do have some uh, extreme conditions sometimes. I think the hardest part is getting the sm pushing the small boat out from the cradle to alongside the ship because our boat dive it doesn't have like a motor for that. It's basically um, human power that has to push it out and then the boat dive it actually does the lowering and hoisting of it with uh, the machine. The small boats that we have under cutter are vital to uh, several important factors while we're underway. The main one is if we have a, a person in the water where they fall off the ship, it is quicker and safer to use a small boat to recover them out of the water. We also use the small boat to launch ahead of time to go work shore aids to service them or fix them. We also have them, we send them off to go recover stray buoys, which is buoys that have broken off their mooring and up on the bank. And that's another important thing because we can reuse some of those buoys. So therefore it saves money for the taxpayers. And the evolution is before we're going to launch a small boat, we, uh, it's important to bring the ship down to a safe, controllable speed. We look around for traffic, make sure there's not going to be an issue with other boats in the area. The crew will be getting dressed out in the proper protective, personal protective equipment. They will also be doing a general assessment of risk, uh, what we call a GAR, before they get underway. Uh, it's pretty much an all-hands evolution because of the safety factor of moving a small, heavy boat across um, the edge of the ship and we just got to make sure that uh, we're on the same radio channel and we conduct a comms check make sure we have communications with them before they take off the main missions or operations that we use the small boat is when they will leave and go to shore aids and serv service them either by checking to make sure the lights still work and the day boards are still showing the characteristics as they're supposed to they will also make sure that the brush is not covering the aids. They will also recover stray buoys, as we call them. Those are the buoys that are up against the bank, and then we'll bring them back to the ship. So the potential that we can reuse them or we send them to the buoy depot so they can be recycled. Uh, this definitely saves a lot of time for the small boat because they can work a lot more shore aids more efficiently and a little bit safer than pushing the ship up against the bank. The engineering of our ship is vital to especially starting off with the draft of the vessel. Because we operate in shallow water and we're essentially looking for the shoal water to better mark for commercial and recreational traffic, the engines are just as vital as well because we need to have that power to be able to go through the current, through the wind, and steering is just as important because of the maneuvering with us working against or with the current and the wind and going through locks can be very tricky especially when you're going downbound with the following current because you get these what they call outdraft where the water is getting sucked away from the lock wall over to the dam so it's very important to have that power and maneuverability to get into the locks the endurance of the cutter is very important because depending on the area that we're working, sometimes we have to cover other ships. So the sewage with having 14 people on board can get filled up pretty quickly. Fuel wise, we've been underway for I think 12 days and not needed to fuel during that time. And also another important thing is having enough space for our food. Uh, the refrigerators and freezers um, need to be adequate enough to the handle handle that long period of time. Weather conditions can have a significant impact on the crew. 
Uh, environmentals, depending on what they are, either being too hot outside, beating down on the metal deck, it's important to be able to send the crew into a shaded area. So that way, like between buoy runs or during locking procedures or if we're pushed in working a shore aid, they have the ability to stay in a, a cool shade to help with recovery of working um, out in the sun. Wintertime, it's, it's just as important to have an area where they can be out, or inside away from the outside elements to keep from getting uh, extreme cold when working buoys. When we have uh, an engineering casualty on our equipment, it's important that we, able, we are able to find adequate source to get the parts. Sometimes we may have to have things shipped. It may take a few days. Uh, the biggest concerns for that is if we are experience a casualty while we're underway because we are pushed in on the riverbank waiting. So it's definitely important to be able to have a quick and efficient access to parts for our equipment on board. Right now our cutter can get underway with 14 persons and it's broken up into three berthing areas. You have the one berthing which only has one person is the officer in charge. The second berthing has two people. It's the executive petty officer and engineering petty officer. And then down below we have 11 person berthing. So it's 11 people all together and they're sharing two showers, a toilet, and a urinal. And right now, the only way we can have a mixed gender crew is if the officer in charge is a female or if the EPO and XPO are female. Our mess deck galley right now is uh, cannot accommodate the full crew. So we actually have to rotate meal times or during meal times we have to rotate the crew so that way everybody gets a chance to eat a nice hot refreshing meal. And right now, due to the location of it, it uh, when we're underway, we're really working buoys, it vibrates back there and it's very loud where the cook actually wears hearing protection. And sometimes uh, we, can't, we try to do all hands down there. It's very crowded, like when we're getting ready for drills or any kind of other training that we need to brief them, we get everybody into the mess deck, especially if the weather outside does not permit us to go on the buoy deck to discuss it. One of the other things that we do on board that's very important is training. We conduct drills periodically so that way we can respond to an emergency. It's very important to have an area where the crew can dress out in certain equipment and be able to have unrestricted access to that equipment to help respond into emergencies. And the primary emergencies we're looking for are fire, flooding, and damage to the equipment, machinery equipment. While they're attacking this casualty, we on the bridge are looking for a spot to push in so we can get away from the river and away from the traffic so we can focus safely on responding to the casualty.